Hello everybody and welcome back for another Sunday in the Garden visit. I believe it is the 12th of June today. I thought we'd start with a look at the aquaponics and just kind of do a circle around the property. So let's get started. Starting with the fish tank, they uh, really seem to be enjoying the extra oxygen added to the water by the air stone. I find them hanging out by that thing most of the time when I come in here. I haven't finished cutting the boards for the uh, end of the aquaponic bed yet. Had an incident with the drill. But I have changed a few of the plants in here. We've still got the original kale that I'm hoping will come back and do well. And then back here, we have a shard that I rescued from the garden. Over here, we've got a little tiny offshoot from the Malabar spinach in the house. I'm hoping that will root. Up here, we've got a tangerine dream. It's a sweeter pepper, so I'm not too worried about having that in the aquaponics. We learned last year that uh, hot peppers in aquaponics don't necessarily end up as hot as they can be, but those two plum cuttings still sort of looking alive. And then in this container here, I planted some of the broadleaf sage that I found. That's a first time for me. And then back here, I've got some dark opal or purple basil. That should be really nice if that pops up. Just kind of using those plum cuttings to create a little shade over the seeds while they're first sprouting up. And as always, you know, hoping for the best. My goal is for basically square fish gardening with the aquaponics though. I'm going to put in three more spots. I have 10 goldfish in the tank, so I'm going to grow 10 plants in the system and hopefully they should all be, you know, fairly decent plants. On the way to the pepper shrine, I've got one little early dew, honeydew seedling sprouting up. No idea if it's going to have enough time to grow for me, but I'm sure hoping. I love honeydew melons, I tell you what. So yeah, that brings us over to the pepper shrine or the 11 of them that have been moved outside. So, most of them are doing pretty well. They're adapting to the sunshine. I really should uh, set up some sort of a shade cloth thing for next year. I will definitely have that done. I say most, because as you can tell, these two here, not looking so great. This is the uh, red cherry, I call them the cherry bomb peppers. Not taking to the sunshine very well. And this is the lemon hot, and I learned last year in the old place that uh, these these say full sun but they really they can't take it I'm hopeful with the new growth on top and as you can see there are lots of peppers setting in there but I just don't know the sand dollar seems to be recovering fairly well though and like I say most of these peppers are doing all right I've learned some painful and valuable lessons for next year that's the way it goes though. Gardening is about growing your knowledge just as much as it is growing your food. I've been running around with lots of the straw clippings this, this year and mulching things up. You'll see that in the other garden soon. Let's take a look at these apple trees out front though while we're here. Here's a look at the crab apple. It's been crazy windy so this tree's not looking too great but as you can see it's got those little tiny apple starts on it. Now these things <laughs> are not big even when they were fully ripe. We found a few on the tree last year when we got here. But uh, it's going to be really interesting to see them grow. Very tart little crab apples. I love them. Up here on the fairy garden apple tree, we're calling them mini max for now. Got lots of little clusters of fruit developing. Still haven't heard from anybody as to whether or not I should be thinning these out and getting rid of the smaller ones or just leaving them. But I'm super excited by the whole concept of homegrown apples. It's amazing as you get older and you get new priorities in life, the, the different things that excite you as you go along. These bushes are really exciting me. Had one of my viewers, and many thanks for that, head out and check against their Saskatoon berry bush. They say it looks exactly the same, and I see a whole lot of berry starts on here. I'm thinking jams, jellies, how the Saskatoon berries mix with hot peppers. Oh, I'm gonna have fun with this. On the way to the back gardens now, we have the berry bushes. We decided to move them because we do want to build a fence along that line and don't want to rough them up too bad when we're doing it. So we've got the red currant now kind of chilling at the corner of the, we call it the evening porch. Evening sun shines quite nicely on here. Got a few things we want to do to this, but time is a wonderful thing. Get lots of time to play with it when you're calling it home. Anyway, there is our red currant. We have finally decided that the two goji berries are going to go in here. Help cover up that wall a little bit. Maybe put some sort of a rock garden in here. Not quite sure what we're going to do with the ground cover yet, but 
the gojis will soon be in the soil and have a permanent home. And here you can sort of see the uh, polar jewel honeyberry bush. Relocated, nice spot in the yard. Everything kind of dips down a little bit there, so we're hoping it'll be well watered. Yeah. Things should grow to 10 by 10, so that be a nice bush by the time it's done. And then back over here, there used to be a, a fire pit here from what we can tell. So we just kind of dug that up and we put the uh, Boralis Hascap berry in there. So between four to six feet it says, so again, should look nice, cover up the bare spot fairly well when it's done. Which brings us to the windmill garden. Beautiful with that creeper going up the tower, I love it. But over here, because most things have died off already, I did end up putting in the Mexican hot pepper mix. So I've got them kind of scattered all along the back portion here. Hopefully they'll do all right. I haven't gotten around here with the grass clippings yet. But it was getting late in the evening when I was finishing that off, so. Nice cloudy day today. Gives them a, a bit of time to adjust. They've been out hardening for, oh, I'd say a couple of days. Almost, yeah, maybe even four days. So hopefully they will survive. Here we have the original pepper patch. As you can see, I've been through here with the lawn clippings, covering up pretty much everything I could. Played a little bit of fill in the blanks. I've got some sage planted there now. And along the back, I've got the red Thai chili that was part of the shrine, and I've got the fatali that was part of the shrine, just to add some life here. But there are a few things, a few different varieties that seem to have survived. Again, valuable lessons learned. I'll take a much better go at it next year. But it looks like I might still have three little tiny St. Thomas Bane peppers that are fighting for life over there. Looks like I've still got two of those darn good peppers that Tracy sent me, so finally get a chance to try those. That's exciting. A few of the sweet heats made it, and I see a banana pepper, a couple of banana peppers, golden cow wonder. I won't really know until I start to see some fruit. But it'll be interesting. The tomato plot behind it, I finally filled up the back. Still stubbornly hanging on for those two cucumbers, but not exactly counting my, my chickens there. But here we can see a few of the tomatoes are doing alright. Again, I've been in here with the lawn clippings. They seem to like that. So that's good. Our prize is still this blood ripple from Rob Bob, and I'm pleased to say I have flower starts. That's fabulous. So I'm definitely going to try and save some seeds from this, since it's uh, clearly the sturdiest of the tomato plants that I planted this year. It'd be nice to have some growing next year. I did plant some replacement seedlings that seem to be sprouting there for the beefsteaks, so that'll be nice. And I got the Cherokee purples in along the back of the tomato square. So here's to hoping they adjust. Then in this big area here, aside from that one Brussels sprout sticking up in the middle, these are the remainders of the Caribbean hot peppers. The ones not going into the experimental boxes came in to fill up the back patch. Had to fill it with something after we uh, stole the soil for the bunker garden. Let's go look at that next. I have to say I am as pleased as I am surprised with uh, how well this bunker garden seems to be growing along. I really wasn't expecting much of anything, so uh, seeing so much green in here, <laughs> it's just blowing me away. But we finally got all four of the pumpkin varieties. I think those are the fairy tale, the sugar, the pie. We've got one coming up in the Burgess. And those are the giant pumpkins, I think Atlantic Giant or something, I can't remember the specific name. But then these peas are all doing really well, the beans are all doing really well, the corn's doing really well. One thing I have learned though is I don't think I put enough soil in this midsection here. It seems to be drying out really, really fast, so these beans aren't popping up quite as well. But again, you notice I've been in here with the grass clippings, covering it all up, trying to save that moisture. And it does seem to be making a difference. So, quite curious to see how this bunker garden grows along as the years go by. It's only going to get more compost in it. In theory, it should get better every year. So behind the bunker garden we've got the spruce bed here, or that of it I uncovered from the weeds. 
This first section, not really doing all that great. Do have a couple of sunflowers that are trying to pop up, but that's about it. Doesn't really look like too many of the peppers in that section made it. Got a few peppers in the next section that seem to be stubbornly struggling along. I don't know how well this one's showing up, but it seems to be producing some true leaves there. This little guy here has got some true leaves. Need to come through here and weed, but if we look at the next section of the squash and the sunflowers, these guys are doing great. Plenty of squash starts there. Lots of strong sunflower starts along the back. Very exciting. And the El Jefe peppers over here seem to be doing all right as well. I saw four the other day. So as you can see, that's one of the strongest peppers out here. The El Jefe is doing really well in this environment. I think basically with all of these seedling peppers, I, I transplanted them way too early. They should have had at least two or three sets of leaves. I read somewhere they should have five sets of leaves before you bring your peppers out. So I'm going to look into that. I want to uh, definitely have stronger starts, better survival rates next year. So that's about it for the peppers that have made it in the spruce garden. However, the next patch of squash and sunflowers seem to be doing just great. So that's very exciting. I'll be curious to see if they end up growing up or spreading out or how that goes. And that pretty much brings us to the original patch we dug out for the corn. Again, you can see I've been through there with the lawn clippings. But the corn, to me, is looking great. I've got nothing to, to base my opinion on because I've never really grown corn before, but... Nice, neat little rows, all standing up pretty straight. I took some time the other day, planted some cucumbers in those little areas along this first row of corn, because those other cucumbers don't look like they're gonna make it, so we'll see how those do with the corn stalk to climb up. Could be a good idea, could be a bad idea. Time will tell. In the two different spots that I've got peas going, I've put in some basic trellises. These are the snow peas. Look like they're doing the best, so. Quick little teepee with some string and three bits of bamboo. Hopefully they fill that thing up as time goes on. The carrots are definitely sprouting up beside them though. The beets are definitely sprouting. A little bit of a stray over there. The shard's doing all right. So this sort of screwed up square foot gardening thing seems to be working-ish for me. Definitely room for improvement, but Again, that's kind of what gardening is all about, is just getting better. As you can see, these beans along the back seem to be doing just fine. There's a, that's a Brussels sprout, I believe. We had some of this kale last night. That was fantastic. I really, really like the way kale seems to respond to growing here. And another Brussels sprout in the corner there, so... Yeah! It's the garden so far. I'm actually pretty, uh, pretty excited. Lost a lot of peppers, and that's, you know... Not great, but lessons learned. Next year's starts will be stronger. So it's exciting in its own way. Starting to look more like my yard though. Gardens everywhere, as compared to buckets everywhere in the old place. But happiness is where you find it, you know, and I find it growing my own food. I go to the grocery store, I look at the prices on produce, and I just, I don't want to pay that. And then when you do pay that and you taste it, it's like, oh man, man. So much better if I had just grown it myself. So, yeah, that is that is where I find my happiness. That and being out here in the middle of nowhere listening to all these birds while I'm trying to make my video. It's actually quite relaxing. So, I hope you all have enjoyed the video today. And I uh, have no idea what's coming up in the week ahead. But I will definitely see you next Sunday. And hopefully, the garden will be progressing quite nicely. So, yeah, until then, have yourselves a fantastic week ahead, everybody. I will see you then for sure. Bye.